Final item of business today is the Member's Business Debate on Motion Number 12348 in the name of Paul Martin on protecting rent tied pub tenants in Scotland. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I invite those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. I now call on Paul Martin to open the debate. Mr Martin, you have seven minutes or thereby, please. President Officer, can I uh, begin by thanking all of those members who uh, have supported the business motion uh, in my name, and I think it should be put on record that the motion has attracted support from all the political parties in the Chamber, uh, with the exception of the Conservatives, and I hope uh, after what is our... Uh, from, I know it's from a central position that Alex Johnson has made a gesture towards me, so I don't know if it means that the Conservatives are now supporting uh, the motion in my name. Perhaps he can make that clear uh, during his contribution uh, but I hope after a constructive debate uh, this evening that we can uh, take this issue forward in a manner that's cross-party. Many of us will have various experiences of pubs, uh, many more experiences than others, uh, but can I make the point that my main thrust of the debate this evening is in respect of uh, tide pubs and the contractual arrangements that could tide pubs find themselves in. It's estimated that there are over 4,600 pubs in Scotland uh, and over 20% of them are Thai pubs owned by pubcos. Now, I'm sure over the years we've all received various representations on the challenging economic climate for uh, these uh, pubs and many pubs across uh, Scotland for that matter, particularly in respect to laws that have been passed both in Westminster uh, and in the Scottish Parliament. Uh, and I think uh, we owe it to those hard-working uh, pub tenants to ensure that we don't put any further obstacles in their way uh, in dealing with the challenges that they face uh, over the coming years. And I think it should be recognised that whilst uh, we support many of these legislative changes that have been made, that's all the more important why this debate should be taken forward uh, at the same time. St. Osser, and all of the evidence that I've seen on this issue has recognised that the tide model is wide open to abuse, uh, with many tenants finding themselves uh, trapped in bleak financial situations, forced to buy products at an inflated rate uh, from the pub codes allowing them themselves to make lit very little savings and investments uh, in their business. Last year, the CGA strategy uh, group surveyed uh, the Scottish Tide pub tenants for the campaign for real ale. And the findings for me were absolutely shocking. And can I just highlight a number of them? First of all, 66% of those respondents earned less than £15,000 per annum, with 10% of them earning less than £10,000 per annum. 74% of the respondents consider themselves worse off as a result of the Tide model. And 3% of those had a very positive sentiment for the Tide pub arrangement that they have uh, with the pub cause. And I, think, and I think for us, how we should ensure that we take this issue forward is to recognise that 99% of respondents felt that the Scottish Government should take action now to protect pub tenants north of the border. Officer, when, and I think we should also recognise that the Tide pub model has been scrutinised for a number of years, particularly uh, in Westminster. Uh, and the UK Government in 2013 received a great deal of evidence in respect to this, and can I just highlight some of these, and uh, some of the examples of the activities of the pub codes. And a great deal of activities uh, should be highlighted, and I'm sure will be highlighted by other members. But there's a number of practices, including tenants, been advised about large rent rises without giving them any kind of justification for the rises. There was examples of pub codes providing tenants with misleading estimates of potential sales. And I also met with a publican who advised me that if he were to look at uh, investing in his own uh, particular premises, then these works could be carried out, but would be carried out by the pub codes contractors at an contract, inflated rate to ensure that the pub co also received their cut of the work that was to be carried out. I think, I, think, I think most of us in this chamber would find such practices to be unacceptable and are certainly not ensuring that small businesses are supported across Scotland. President Officer, I think it has to be, and I need to highlight this once again today, for far too long, uh, pub, Thai pub tenants have been squeezed by the pub codes behaving like payday lenders. This is unacceptable, uh, and I call on the government to take specific action. Now, I need to highlight once again that last year MPs passed the Small Business and Enterprise Employment Bill 
and England and Wales to ensure that no Tide pub tenant is worse off than a free of Tide pub tenant. The bill introduced a statutory code of practice and an independent uh, adjudicator to govern the relationship between the tenants and the pub codes. It was also recommended that we should include a market rent only option for pub tenants. So this provided options uh, that could take forward that relationship between the pub co and the tenant to ensure that there's parity in that relationship. The President also, for many years, there has been a constitutional discussion uh, concerning this grey area, and I know there's been a number of constitutional discussions over the years, and this has been one of them. And as a result of this, Scottish publicans will not benefit from these new laws that have been passed in Westminster. The President also, in taking forward this debate, I am calling the Scottish Government today to introduce an independent adjudicator, a statutory code of conduct and a market rent only, similar to that legislation that has been passed in Westminster, and also uh, to allow every tenant to choose between the right for a tie or a free of tie arrangements, allowing the market to decide what is best, and this would allow tenants a fair and reasonable transpar transparent review of the true rental value of their property. Therefore, once presiding officer, we've actually passed legislation in Westminster that has a major, it's actually been passed in Westminster that we agree with. Uh, and I am surprised that the Scottish Government find themselves in the position uh, that we want to debate that issue, given that we've received cross-party support from their members of government today. And I want to say that in a constructive tone, uh, because I do uh, want to take this forward uh, and ensure that the publicans across and these small businesses across Scotland benefit from that. And presenter, so we should also recognise the importance of these businesses across Scotland. I think members would be surprised to hear that directly pubs uh, employ over 43,000 people in Scotland, a very important part of our industry and employment opportunities for people in Scotland. So, presenter, officer, I call on the Scottish Government to give clear clarity today on how we can move forward for this and also for the Minister, and I will intervene if the Minister does not confirm this, I would like the Minister to give us a commitment that there will be a consultation exercise, similar to the one that was carried out in Westminster, and that we will look to legislate before the Scottish Government, before the Scottish Parliament elections next year. President officer, I can submit the motion in my name, uh, and I call on the Chamber to support the sentiments of what I have laid out. Thank you very much. Many thanks. And I now call on Sandra White to be followed by Neil Bibby. Four minutes, please. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. Can I thank Paul Martin for securing this debate and all the groups, some who are here tonight, all the groups who sent information in in regards to this debate and uh, also the bottle of beer, which was all uh, very, very welcome. Uh, I would like to look at the legislation Paul Martin has picked up on part of that, uh, which was passed in Westminster, and sort of a small summary, I hope, of what Thai pubs or beer Thai uh, actually is. Uh, Paul Martin touched on the fact in March 2015 in Westminster primary legislation established in a statutory code and adjudicator received royal assent in the UK Parliament. Now, while the legislation has been passed, the code will not come into effect until June 2016, and it will be implemented uh, via secondary uh, legislation. And then the next year there will be further consultation uh, with a range of stakeholders to write the code, and the adjudicator will also be established. Uh, during that period of consultation, we'll, uh, you'll look at how it intends to arbitrate disputes and undertake investigations in re relation to breach of the actual code. Now, it seems to me when you look at uh, what's been passed in Westminster, what the motion asked for and uh, the contributions, I'm sure you'll hear uh, tonight, not just from Paul Martin, but from others as well, it seems to be that uh, what's been asked for here is in line with the legislation which has been passed in Westminster, and uh, it's actually supported by small and large businesses and organisations. And when I mentioned about the timescale, I think it's important to note the timescale which has been passed by Westminster of one year uh, going into consultation. And uh, I do wonder if the Minister would be minded to follow uh, similar timescales for, as Paul Martin has already mentioned, uh, you know, consultation, adjudication, in regards to introducing similar proposals uh, as called for in the, the motion. Uh, Presiding officer, if you actually look at uh, what uh, Tide pubs etc are or Tide beer, uh, basically
really it's kind of works in, in two ways. Uh, beer and other products are supplied to the pub on an exclusive basis in return for a below, below market fixed rent for the pub and uh, other benefits also. And generally, the tenant agrees to pay above the wholesale market price for the Thai products, for example, the beer. Uh, and we know how many pubs in that there are in Scotland, uh, estimated that around 850 are tied lease agreements, and 530 of these are owned by companies covered, already covered, that's an important point, already covered by the legislation that's just been passed in England and Wales. So I think that's an important point to look at also. Now, if we actually look at, well, take the point of my constituency in particular, uh, you know, I have a brewery in my constituency, uh, the Dry Great Brewery, uh, Paul Martin's constituency, Well Park uh, Tenants Brewery, and there's also the West Brewery. So there's a number of, uh, well, tenants has been established for many, many years now. I've met with, with the brewers as well. It's been established for many, many years. But the Dry Great Brewery and the West Brewery are smaller breweries which are coming on board. And I think it's great. And it's not about, in my eyes, it's not about competition. It's about fairness and equity for everyone to, to enjoy. And I don't think just big breweries should be able to get to uh, this uh, equity. I think everyone should be able to get fairness and equity. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm on my last minute. I'm sorry about that. Uh, four minutes, signed off. So I'm sorry, Dennis, I can't take that. I just want to get in the point about my own contention. It was, it was Mike, sorry about that. I just wanted to get in my own part of Glasgow, Kelvin, uh, obviously, in my area, it's obviously the city centre. I've got 319 pubs in my constituency. I have one brewery, as I've already mentioned. And uh, the total amount of jobs, 16 to 24 year olds, is over 2,000. Direct jobs are 5,000, over 5,000. And total jobs are 6,684, which is associated a lot, of, a lot of jobs, a lot of people reliant on that and the contribution uh, to the economy, not just in Glasgow, Scotland as well. So I would like the Minister to have a look at uh, the actual proposal that's here in the motion and if you could perhaps you know, let us know if he's prepared to look at it in the same vein as already been mentioned by Paul Martin. Thank you, President Officer. And thank you. I now call on Neil Booby to be followed by Alex Johnson. Thank you, uh, President Officer. Um, I would like to join uh, Sandra White in, in, in welcoming uh, the debate today and congratulate Paul Martin on securing this important debate uh, and issue. In, in the chamber. Pub company reform is crucial to the well-being of Scotland's beer and pubs industry and the fact that two pubs close every week in Scotland is a stark reminder of the need for real action. Like many members, I have been contacted by constituents and pub tenants in advance of this debate about the specific difficulties facing rent-tied pubs. I have previously written to the Minister on this issue and I hope uh, this evening he will address uh, some of my constituents' concerns. The camera briefing circulated ahead of this debate provided some uh, eye-opening uh, statistics. We know that forcing licensees to buy beer from their uh, landlords has resulted in them paying at least 50% more than they would on the open market. And camera survey of Thai pub tenants uh, last year showed that almost two-thirds of respondents had an income of less than £15,000. Is this type of financial uh, pressure that results in rent tie pubs being 62% more likely to go out of business than free of tie pubs. And we need to remember the human cost of closures be uh, because, as Sandra White says, there are thousands of jobs uh, reliant um, on, on uh, employment in pubs and, and in rent tied pubs. So it should come as no surprise that there is a real demand for a Scottish pubs code to ensure that tenants tied to large pub companies are no worse than off than if they were free of tie. As Paul Martin has said, we have seen action to increase protection for these tenants recently in England and Wales through the Small Business Enterprise and Employment Bill introduced uh, recently at Westminster. This includes uh, the introduction of a statutory code and an independent adjudicator to ensure that the relationship between tied licensees and pub companies is subject to fair and lawful trading. It also introduces, as Paul Martin says, a market rent only option uh, so that Thai tenants can buy beer on the open market. The introduction of such a market rent only option in a Scottish pubs code would allow tenants to choose between a tied agreement and a non tied agreement every five years or in the event of a significant increase in the price of Thai products. This would place tenants in Scotland in a fairer and far stronger negotiating position. 
This is crucial in delivering a fair deal for tenants and keeping prices reasonable for pub goers. And I'm, I'm sure there's quite a few pub goers in the chamber this evening. Presiding officer, I, I want to highlight the, the thoughts of a rent high pump tenant in my own area. I met with the licensee of a pub in Paisley who told me that, they, um, that having seen the action being taken uh, d down south, it was a no brainer that the same action should be taken here. And he and many others are calling on the minister uh, to listen to uh, their voices. He told me that the, allowing pubs like his to buy beer on the open market could be the difference between them struggling to make a living and having a thriving business. Presiding officer, support for action is widespread. As we know, brewers, including uh, Tenant Caledonian Breweries, Fine Ales and Williams uh, Brothers, have all indicated their support, amongst others. They feel that tied rents place real restrictions on both Scottish brands and publicans, and that bringing Scotland to line with England and Wales would mean that those operating in the Scottish market can see positive changes in their businesses. 99% of tied licensees agree that the Scottish Government should act to ensure that the protections to be afforded to tied licensees in England and Wales are also enacted in Scotland. Paul Waterson, Chief Executive of the Scottish Licence Trade Association, said, Our message remains clear. We need parity with the rest of the UK and we need it fast. So I would like to uh, join uh, with Paul Martin in urging the Minister uh, to listen to those voices calling for reform and to outline this evening what actions the Scottish Government will take to provide much needed protection for the rent tied pub tenants in Scotland. Many thanks. I now call on Alec Johnson to be followed by Anne McTaggart. Deputy Presiding Officer, can I begin by offering some reassurance to Paul Martin? The, there's been one or two things have uh, taken up my attention just in recent weeks, and I managed to miss his motion. Otherwise, I would have signed it. However, I hope that he takes this opportunity that I have tonight to express my support for the motion and the principles that lie behind it uh, as a guarantee of my support. It's some years ago now, in fact, it was the week of my 18th birthday that I first presented myself to a senior rugby club. And the captain of the club took a look at me, looked up at me, and he said, aye, you're a big lad, but you'll hit a pit on weight or you'll get hurt. So that night, I did two hours of physical exercise, and then we retired to the pub where the real training started. And I have to say that I've been working on that ever since. <laughs> the truth is that I discovered that beer is good for you. And that practice is something that I went on to adopt through my career in the Young Farmers Movement, where a similar approach was taken. The sad thing is that the many pubs I remember being in at that stage None of them now exist. The pressure that there is on our licensed trade is quite extraordinary. And the effect that various other socio-economic drivers have had on the licensed trade has sadly been negative. Too many of us now uh, buy our wine or our beer at supermarkets and we take it home and we drink it in front of our children, which is not the ideal situation to be in. But yet that's the practice we now indulge in. The number of pubs has fallen quite dramatically. And while it's been done often for the best of motives, other changes continue to drive a fall in demand for the traditional pub. The smoking ban, which we all understand, had an impact on many bars. The more recent change in the blood alcohol level limits for driving has resulted in changes and effects on the, the footfall at many country pubs. That ongoing problem means that there is serious pressure in the licensed trade. Um, I will briefly. John Mason. <laughs> Would the member accept that the minimum pricing might swing the balance back towards the pubs? Um, absolutely, but I, I have to point out that I wasn't questioning the motives that lay behind the changes that have taken place. Uh, these motives are sound, even though I have argued occasionally against some of the, the drivers. However, what we can see is that the number of pubs is falling, and that of the pubs that we have lost, the vast majority appear to be uh, rent-tied pubs. So that is the sector that is under the greatest pressure today. There's also the concern that's been expressed by some speakers already, but I will repeat it, that with the changes in the law south of the border, 
we may actually see attempts to force the Tide pub trade forward in Scotland in a way that haven't, the, where the pressure has not been visible in recent years. I want to take the opportunity to back changes that will free up the pub market in Scotland, that will prevent those who are in a rent tied situation having to accept financial decisions and buying pressures that are not their own, pressures that will reduce their income and reduce their viability, leading to yet more closures. I do believe that beer is good for you. I believe that local pubs are good for the communities. But I believe unless we take swift action to avoid the continuing decline of the traditional pub, then we will lose many, many more. And the rent tied pubs are the, the battlefield on which this is currently being fought. So I think I've given you an insight into what my views are, why my views are motivated that way, and why I believe that it is worthwhile for us to pursue this change. So if the, Paul Martin, the mover of the motion, will now accept that, yes, even the Conservatives accept his point of view, let's go forward together and make sure we don't lose any more pubs than is necessary. Many thanks. Now call on Anne McTaggart to be followed by Patrick Harvey. Thank you, President Officer, and I would like to start by thanking my colleague Paul Martin for bringing this to the Chamber this evening. On the surface, the debate this evening is about the licensed pub trade, but really it is about Scottish small businesses. The most damning statistic of them all is that tenanted pubs across Scotland are 62 times more likely to close than their free trade counterparts. And these pubs aren't run by huge companies, nor by big business men or women, but by ordinary people working tirelessly, day in, day out, and for that tireless work, they are paid. Not a salary which provides security for their families, not a salary which allows them to enjoy a lifestyle which rewards their hard work, but in most cases, less than £15,000 a year. Presiding officer, we all agree across this chamber that Scotland needs a thriving business sector to grow our economy. But it is simply cannot be fair that hard-working, honest publicans work day in, day out, and yet do not receive or do not see the benefit of a paycheck that befits their efforts. I believe that enacting le le legislation to protect rent-tied tenants, similar to that in England and Wales, won't solve this problem completely, but it will most certainly help. Introdu introducing a statutory code of practice will provide guidance, support and clar clarity to the industry in Scotland, encompassing fairness and lawful dealings. A Scottish adjudicator should also be established with the power to arbitrate disputes between pub companies and tenants. It should provide a fast, low-cost and effective means of redress for tied tenants in the event of code breaches. And it should have the power to impose financial penalties. For me, this is quite simple. Too many of our pubs are closing down in Scotland, and many of those that aren't only a few steps away from disaster. It is in the interest of everyone across this chamber that our pubs do well. And I'm not by any manner of means advocating for us all to go out and rectify this tonight. But however, presiding officer, it is imperative that our publicans earn a decent wage to reinvest in our economy and that they grow their businesses and create jobs in our communities. A continuation of the current policy will see many ordinary people lose not just their jobs but their livelihoods. Our friends in England and Wales have already legislated for this issue. I believe it would be foolish for us not to follow them. Let's use the powers of this Parliament to allow the pub sector to thrive. Let's create jobs, energise and empower people and give, community pubs, give communities the pubs that they deserve and can be proud of. We have seen with the Tenants Training Academy in Glasgow, with along with its recently opened conference facilities at the Whale Park Brewery and the Dry Great Bar that I'm aware some of my colleagues mentioned earlier, 
the great benefits the pub trade can bring to the Scottish economy if allowed to flourish. Presiding officer, as I have said previously, bringing our laws into line with England and Wales won't solve the issue overnight, but it's a start. Let's make that start and then get out there and speak to everyday pub owners across the country. Let's find out what support they need, what is working for them and what isn't. And let's start the process of change. I would most certainly drink to that, even though I'm a teetotaler. Thank you very much. I now call on Patrick Harvey to be followed by John Mason. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm very pleased to have a chance to speak in this uh, debate. I'm not sure that technically my membership of the Campaign for Real Ale is a registrable interest, but I declare it in the interests of transparency anyway. CAMERA exists in many ways, not just to campaign uh, in favour of, of, of real ale, but to celebrate something positive about the kind of alcohol culture we should be proud of. And it's not something that this Parliament often does well. One of my bugbears over the years has been that very often we talk about alcohol in terms of harm, in terms of social harm, health harm, criminal justice consequences, and we talk about it in terms of economic benefit and how much money people make out of whisky exports and how many jobs are involved but we don't actually talk about the kind of alcohol culture that would be healthier, that would be something to be proud of and happy about in our society. We talk about the, the negative aspects uh, of the alcohol culture, the positive aspects of the economic consequences, but there's nothing in between. And I think this motion uh, gives us the chance, it opens up some space to say something about the kind of alcohol culture we should be aiming for, the kind of alcohol culture that would be healthier. And that's why I congratulate Paul Martin most significantly for bringing this motion to the chamber. There will be some who would advocate for the change that's in this motion on the basis that there's a, a principle that markets ought to set rents or that free markets operate more efficiently and will contribute more to the economy. Members will understand that that's probably not my starting point. My starting point is to recognise that this is a recreational drug, a sanctioned legalised recreational drug which we have over the last few decades allowed to be handed over overwhelmingly to a tiny number of multinationals. Whereas there used to be so much more diversity both in production and in on sales uh, in Scotland and in other countries. There used to be so much more diversity of small businesses with their roots in a community. A recreational drug should be sold carefully and in a responsible manner, and I think it's those independent businesses that do have their roots in a local community, rather than where decisions about the business's operations are being taken centrally by someone who's not part of that community. Businesses which look after their staff and so have a lower turnover of staff, and so someone behind the bar who knows what they're doing if problems do emerge or behaviour gets out of hand. These are the kind of businesses that we should trust uh, to sell this product responsibly uh, and carefully. And it's the small independent producers, the kind of producers who are flourishing at the moment in Scotland, who make their profits from quality, not from volume sales. They're the ones that we should be looking to see having a, a bigger, a growing share uh, of this, uh, the, the, the product that's being sold in the country. It's a rare and enjoyable novelty when I agree with something that Alex Johnson says. But yes, beer is good for you when we're talking about quality beer and when we're talking about it being sold in a responsible and a careful way. And I think it's the independence of those businesses, both the brewers and the independent pubs, that will lead to that, that outcome. That's what I have in mind uh, in supporting this motion. Because even though uh, an individual pub may decide that they, they're happy with the reduced rent that the BFI gives them, part of the consequence is that they'll have an increased incentive on the sales end, on volume sales. And if we want the incentive instead to be in producing a, a good quality environment that people want to be in, that feels safe, that feels healthier even with the smoking ban as well, I think we, we need to recognise that the inflated price they're paying for their beer, 
we shouldn't be putting pressure on them to recoup that always and only through volume sales. So this motion, whether people come at it from a free market point of view or from the point of view of responsible uh, selling of something which should not be handed over to the free market and actually where we should be investing in quality, not in volume sales and not just in economic output, uh, I think this is something that uh, every part of the political spectrum can unite around. And I do hope that the Minister, in responding to the debate, will say positively that he intends to take the action we're all calling for. Many thanks. Now call on John Mason to be followed by Graham Pearce. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you also to Paul Martin for bringing forward uh, this subject, which is something that I have also been concerned about for some time. Uh, my starting point has to be that I like beer. Uh, in particular, I like trying beers from Scottish brewers, and within that, especially from smaller brewers. And in my own constituency, as Sandra White mentioned, uh, we have the West Brewery in the old Templeton's building at Glasgow Green, uh, which members may be familiar with. And that has been a huge success with its German-style beers made here in Scotland. I think Mr Harvey also uh, frequents it. Uh, from a jobs and business perspective, we also want to encourage smaller Scottish businesses to develop new products, grow their businesses and create more jobs. Will the member give way? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, Russell? I think it is absolutely crucial, the point you make, in terms of microbreweries and small breweries, particularly in rural areas. There are a number of those in Argyll. I have to say Fine Ales is one that's involved in this debate. And without ending the present system, the opportunities for those breweries remain more limited than they should be. Yes, I thank Mr. Mr Russell for his intervention. I was in his constituency the other week with the Equal Opportunities Committee and tried uh, three variations of the Isla uh, brew, which was very acceptable. Um, it frustrates me when I see folk in Scottish pubs and restaurants drinking imported beers when perfectly good Scottish alternatives are available. Some of these same people will complain about a lack of jobs in Scotland, and yet they drink imported products. Where is the logic in that? However, having got that point off my uh, chest, I, I do accept there are other problems apart from consumer choice, because in many cases there is no consumer choice. And that is what we are discussing today with the whole question of tied pubs. As I understand it, this has at least two major impacts, one restricting the choice of beers available to the customer, and two seriously distorting a market to the disadvantage, especially of smaller pub operators. But I had not realised until I was reading the briefings that there is also an issue with tenants' uh, deposit bonds, which can involve deposits of between £6,000 and £50,000, which is clearly a serious initial commitment. Now, the briefings have made clear that there is less of a problem in Scotland with 850 out of about 4,900 jobs in tied tenancy lease agreements, which is about 17% compared to 39% down south. Now, this is a point that uh, Fergus Ewing has made uh, both face-to-face -face and in writing, and I appreciate his letter to me of the 8th of January, uh, which showed very much an openness and willingness to listen to any evidence uh, which might be produced. I also have to say I object to Scotland always being compared to England, whether favourably or unfavourably. We have our own parliament, we can do things in our own way, eh, and if we want to make comparisons, there are lots of other countries we can compare with. The briefing from licensees supporting licensees also accepts that the situation in Scotland and England are different, but one of their key arguments is that whereas beer prices are higher to compensate for lower rent, in recent times, both the cost of beer and the rental element have gone up substantially, leading to problems for tenants. Uh, I was reading the, uh, the Library of the House of Commons uh, comments on some of this, and the quote, uh, one or two quotes were interesting. The same select committee also found that the notion that tenants were receiving countervailing benefits that compensated for higher tied beer prices was also questionable. There is no evidence demonstrating that a tied lessee receives benefits not available to free of free tie tenants or freeholders. Again, last year for the first time, rent as a percentage of turnover in the tied estate overtook the free of tie estate. There is nothing inherently wrong with the franchise type model with reduced fixed costs compensated for by higher running costs. However, the argument today is that the balance has been lost in recent times, trapping some who would benefit from having other options. The whole idea of break clauses and the option to have a different model after, say, five years strikes me as very attractive. Presenting officer, I think we do want to encourage pubs. They do face other challenges, which other, mentions have, other members have mentioned, eh, as a positive aspect of our culture. And I hope the minister can indicate some changes going forward, whether or not that is exactly the same as happened in England. Thank you. Thanks very much. I now call on Graham Pearson, after which we move to the closing speech to the minister. 
Presiding officer, I, I rise with some trepidation to speak in, in this debate this evening. I am obviously in the company of experts when it comes to the pursuit of the business of beer and obviously its consumption. Um, so I will try as best I can to play my part in, in this debate. First of all, I thank Paul Martin for the member's business, which has introduced me to some of the complexities that lie behind the business of public houses across Scotland. And in that context, the briefing from CAMRA, Scottish Beer and Pub Association, and many of the constituents across the south of Scotland, the region that I represent, has helped educate me in understanding some of the stresses and strains that should have been apparent to me previously, but were not uh, under uh, consideration by me in my daily uh, study of the issues which uh, attract the attention of my constituents. It's quite evident that the trade is under pressure. As Neil Bibby said earlier, at least two public houses a week are currently closing across Scotland. And in the south of Scotland, that is a very serious threat. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the luxury of Sandra White and her many public houses and her thousands of jobs. And the hamlets and villages and towns across the south of Scotland uh, value greatly the presence of a public house in, its, in their midst. And I've got to say that that public house contributes not only in terms of its business, but the community aspect of its presence in supporting communication across communities and maintaining relationships uh, with those who live in the area. Uh, as was indicated uh, by Mr Johnson, the introduction of uh, the smoking ban and the recent changes to alcohol limits in relation to driving particularly has had an impact on the pubs. Uh, not all negative, because certainly since the introdu introduction of the smoking ban, I think, in my view, pubs have become more hospitable, the food more enjoyable, and I think the, the culture of pubs have uh, improved accordingly. I'm sure there'll be those in Scotland who would disagree. But certainly the alcohol limits that have changed have impressed quite properly a responsibility on drivers to be aware of the new limits that apply, and in many aspects they have decided not to drive at all. And that has been reflected in the numbers of people who go into our pubs and therefore allow profits to be made within these premises. Uh, this Parliament has no responsibility for ensuring that people make profit, but we do have a responsibility to try and ensure that we provide a context and an ability for people who conduct proper business to conduct that business at profit and to employ people at a rate of pay that is acceptable in our society. For those reasons, and having read the briefings from all these various groups and listened to those who are engaged in the trade, I think that the proposals that Paul Martin outlines and the experience in England and Wales does need urgent attention from the Minister. In the event that he finds it difficult to action the elements that Paul Martin has introduced this evening, I would expect at least a commitment from the Minister to begin a consultation exercise with some urgency, because businesses are dying as we speak, and there is a need for us to take all steps that are available to us to deliver on behalf of those who provide a trade on our behalf and for our enjoyment. Thanks very much, Presiding Officer. And thank you very much. And we now move the closing speech from the Minister, Fergus Ewing. Minister, seven minutes, so thereby, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank, thank you very much to Paul Martin for allowing us an opportunity to debate an extremely important matter. And thank you also for the Paul Martin also for his constructive tone in opening this debate, uh, one which I hope will be continued. And to all members for their diverse contributions uh, conducted, uh, if I may say so, in a tone of sober conviviality, if that is not an oxymoron, Presiding Officer. I think we can all agree that pubs do play a, an enormous part in our culture, heritage, our communities, our society. They contribute in great measure to our economy and employment, as we've heard from many members. And uh, uh, they seem to be very largely concentrated in Sandra White's constituency, from what she 
says, which uh, may account for her happy demeanour, but uh, they, they uh, also, also contribute to a large number of employment, uh, of, of, uh, of employment opportunities, particularly for young people, I think, and I pay tribute to all people who, who work in, in pubs and, uh, and clubs and restaurants and who serve the public so well and work in anti-social hours. The contribution is £1.5 billion to the Scottish economy. 58% of all tourists have said they've eaten in a bar or pub. 71% of overseas visitors. And I know that, uh, as Graham Pearson has said, the smoking ban perhaps has triggered a, 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 an appetite to diversify and provide uh, other services, better food, reach out to other clientele, make them more family friendly, perhaps introduce uh, more females into the equation in some pubs. Not everyone can do that, of course, but I think we recognise the entrepreneurialism and the imagination of those who are running uh, pubs in Scotland and the enormous contribution that they make to the economy and, indeed, as Patrick Harvey alluded to, the pursuit of human happiness. But the serious, the serious issue, presiding officer, is what we do to address the, the important issue that has been raised. And first of all, Many pressures exist in pubs, uh, many have been alluded to of diverse nature and I'm pleased that the Scottish Government has uh, kept in place the small business bonus which, uh, in which I believe around two in five pubs pay zero or reduced business rates. That's a very real contribution I think to those small pubs that are getting a particular benefit which uh, as a, someone who did run a small business uh, myself before being elected to this place uh, uh, knows well. So we will continue that small business bonus scheme if re-elected to the end of the next session of Parliament in 2021. We also uh, provide access to a range of support through Skills Development Scotland for people looking to develop a career within the pub uh, sector and develop the Taste Our Best scheme which is open to pubs and I think is really raising the standard of food and, and if I may say so, cuisine in Scotland to a higher level and is now, I think, perhaps superior to many other countries that we visit. We may not have said that 20 or 30 years ago. Um, this uh, motion today calls for a statutory code of practice and adjudicator for pub companies to be implemented in Scotland following the introduction of legislation in England and Wales. Let me say that I'm entirely open to to these measures uh, and I want to just comment on some of the arguments that we've been put forward today. First of all, I think it has been acknowledged that the sector in Scotland is rather different from that in England. There are 4,900 pubs in Scotland uh, and most of them are independent free trade, 64%. The figure in England is almost inverted. Most pubs in England are, are tenanted, not freehold. That is the difference. In Scotland, the number of tenancy pubs, I think, was mentioned by Mr. Martin as 1,100. I think that's what he said, I, no, I, 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 if I heard him correctly. But actually, only 538 tied pubs fall within the pub co umbrella, presiding officer. In other words, the protections, the options, the measures which are to be afforded in uh, England and Wales if the legislation goes through and the code of practice comes into effect, as I understand it, it's intended to be brought in in, in uh, June next year, will actually only apply in Scotland to 11% of the pubs and rather less than one half of the tied pubs. I'll just do so in a minute. And therefore, I just wanted to make the point, this is not a point against the motion, it is a point of fact that if we agree to, to follow suit in England, we will actually only be affecting slightly less than one half of the type pubs. And therefore, there is an argument that if action is required, we may want to go further than down south, if the evidence bases it. I'll take uh, intervention. Paul Martin. Uh, uh, also, we also recognise the Minister's latter point, which I think is a constructive. Uh, and this is an argument that's been used against uh, legislating in Scotland, is, is that in respect to the numbers that we're referring to, they're nowhere near as uh, the increase that we see in, in England and Wales. But why should it matter to the Scottish Parliament what the numbers are? It should be regardless of the numbers that we should take this issue forward. Minister? That's a fair point. And I'm, making the, I'm making the argument to say that we're talking about 11% of pubs here in Scotland. Uh, uh, and I think that's an important point to make. There is a price tag to legislative measures. The prices are not insubstantial. The best guesstimate is that the policy introduced down south may lead to some further pub closures, it is stated, and an indirect cost to business of 16.7 million per annum. I think it would be imprudent not to look, presiding officer, very carefully 
at those cost estimates and indeed what they may be in Scotland. None of us here has mentioned the imposition of additional burdens as helpful. We must drill down and look at that very carefully. I received a letter today uh, from various bodies urging support for the motion and the letter said amongst other things that the evidence is crystal clear. The Tide pub model has been abused in Scotland as in England. Tenants are forced to buy overpriced products from large multinational pub codes, restricting their offer and putting them at a serious disadvantage. On the other hand, presiding officer, in response to that, the other side of the argument has stated, and John Mason has alluded to some of these arguments today, uh, that uh, some argue that rent levels are below competitive, below market rent, other special commercial or financial advantages known as SCORFA benefits apply, for example, financing, granting loans in favourable terms, equipping publicans with a site or premises for business, providing them with equipment or undertaking other investments such as Wi-Fi, Sky Sports or provision of accommodation. Uh, now, I just mentioned both sides of the argument, presiding officer, because there are two sides. There is a claim and there is a counterclaim. Instinctively, as someone who was himself a small business, uh, instinctively as someone in a party that supports fairness and equity, we are on, I guess, the side of the small guy, the tenant. That is where we are coming from. That is where Mr. Martin and I think many of the colleagues that have spoken in this debate across political parties are coming from. But what is, uh, well, I think I have very little time. Uh, what you I mean, wanted to say wish. in conclusion, presiding officer, and I'm sorry I haven't been able to address more points, is that the Scottish Government does recognise that we need to take forward this matter. I've had a number of meetings with many of the interested parties, and that is why today I'm announcing that the Scottish Government will commission a study to look at the various pub models operating in Scotland to see whether the tide sector are being treated more unfairly than other parts of the industry. For the study's findings to be robust and informative, it will require the cooperation of the entire sector. Uh, once we have considered the outputs of this study, presiding officer, I shall most certainly come back to this uh, chamber or make a parliamentary statement of some form to outline our intentions. And uh, uh, I very much welcome the fact that this debate has allowed us to focus on some of the issues. And I hope that this measure of announcing a study will be welcomed by all members across the chamber. Many thanks and thank you all. And I now close this meeting of Parliament.